Howdy there. I'm Matt McKinley, and we're burning daylight. Be, uh, I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't ask you. So you're, you're, I guess it's not your latest single, but the previous single, 90 Seconds of Your Time. Yep. Is that, I don't know, the chronolog- that's, that's that's the, the correct chronological one. order? Yep. Okay. So I, when you played uh, the, the dance there at Elko, me and my wife were there, and, um, and you said that you'd wrote this song – while you were or about an elk hunting trip that you went on with, uh, with Evan Felker of the Turnpike Troubadours. Uh, so is there, can you shed a light onto what, what all transpired and caused you to write this song? Sure. Do you want the medium length version or the short version or the long version? <laughs> well, let's, let's go for the long version where we got a little bit of time. So let's, let's dive deep. Okay. Um, so yeah, two years ago, Evan, Evan's a good buddy of mine. He called me up and wants to know if I wanted to go on a, on a mule, like a mule, a pack, a pack trip uh, in Idaho to hunt elk, a bow hunt. And I said, sure. So the the guy that we had with us, he wasn't officially guiding us, but he was from that area. His name is Kurt. And he's a, he's probably in mid mid fifties. He's a, a retired uh, ranger instructor from the army. Okay. So super capable, right? Mm-hmm like awesome guy, but he can do everything like shoe horses and run mule strings and start fires in a brainstorm. I mean, all that stuff, you know, kill people. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. And another buddy of ours from Oklahoma actually named Gatlin. So the four of us, um, so you fly to Boise and then you drive three hours to this little town called Riggins. Mm-hmm. And then you take all the animals up this switch back for 45 minutes to the trailhead. And then you pack everything up and you go, we rode in 20 miles or something like that. It was real rugged. I've done a lot of rugged stuff, but this is one of the most rugged things I've ever done. Those, those uh, mountains in Idaho are straight up and down. <laughs> oh, wow. So anyway, so how is, uh, how is Evan Felker on horseback? Good. He's good. He's great. Good. That's, that's, that's kind of cool to hear. Yeah. He's a hand. He, he, uh, we were all learning a lot from Kurt about mules. I, I hadn't had any experience with mules. Oh, so they're a different I, creature. I don't know how much of it I retained, but he taught us how to, how to pack like tie loads properly and how to, how to run a string. It was pretty cool, actually. Nice. He supplies, he supplies mule, mule strings for, for the fire, fire, forest fire guys. Mm-hmm. That's what he does for a living. Nice. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're, we're in there for about 10 days and what we would do, we'd had a base camp and we would take the animals and, and ride a few miles to where we wanted to hunt that day, tie them up, go hunt, come back in the evening, take them back to base camp. That was the routine. And, uh, so day eight, I think we came back about 10 at night. It was, and we were a little early for the rut it was a bow hunt. So you got to get close to him. So we weren't mm-hmm. having any luck. So we stayed out real late and it was getting dark. We came back about 10, it was just getting, it was pretty, pretty dark. And all of the animals except for my mule had come untied and, and left and, and none of the leads were broken. Right. So mm-hmm. we didn't know what the hell happened because we all know how to tie up animals and, and we all different. There's four of us tying them up. So it was not like one guy screwed it all up, you know? And so yeah. the chances of them coming untied on their own seem slim. Mm-hmm. So and I could say they didn't break the leads. You could even see the lead ropes dragging on the trail. Huh. So <laughs> Kurt was real hot because they're all his animals. He was real upset giving us shit for not being able to tie shit up. And then he realized that his was gone too. <laughs> <laughs> so we spent the next two or three days of the last three days of the hunt trying to track down these animals. There was three or four mules and a mare. And we looked at, we, and we, we saw lots of sign, but we couldn't find them. And, and Kurt had previously told us all these crazy, like he's done a lot of tours overseas in, in, in the, the Middle East and Afghanistan and stuff. So he's, he's done some shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, he's telling us about all these altercations he'd been in with the cops since he's been home and all these crazy situations. He's a great guy, super lovable, but you definitely want him on your side, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. So he's telling us all these crazy stories. And meanwhile, we're looking before we lost the animals. And then when we're tracking these mules the whole time, he's muttering about how great it's going to be to find these guys that stole the mules and bury them in the hills of idaho because he grew up around here and no one's ever gonna find the bodies and shit right <laughs> and after a day or two of this i'm freaking out in my head right and i i finally had to stop him and say i was 
in, in kind of a, my nerdy way, I was like, Kurt, I need 90 seconds of your time here to make sure we're not actually going to murder anybody because I'm not down with spending my life in American prison, you know? <laughs> and and I, I was taking him pretty seriously because some of the situations he told us about previously were pretty hairy, right? Mm. And he kind of just laughed and said, oh, no, we'll just shoot him in the leg, he says. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe try to change your mind, buddy Don't want to see you get your hands bloody Here at home in peacetime Alright folks, move your ass, we're burning daylight